Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Patera here with you today. We're going to be making Appalachian style apple stack cake. It's going to be a great video. I'm really looking forward to this. We make this, we've made one before, but it's with a different recipe. It's a stronger recipe in terms of what the actual cake material is made of. This is an older recipe. Uh, this is what, who we call Mamma Moore. Uh, she's a very good uh, in relation to my family and this recipe we are guesstimating is going back way over a hundred years old in fact I've compared it to some recipes um, that are dating back prior to 1900 and they are almost the exact same except for this one uses buttermilk versus they use cream again when you look at a lot of old recipes they use what they had on hand and a lot of times it's a pinch of this and a dash of that and you go with it the actual recipe that I've got is like that, so I'm actually going to adapt it a little bit if I can in terms of measurements because I wasn't given you know full measurements on everything or baking time. So this is going to be a little bit of a, an experiment at the same time. Let's go over some of the ingredients that we have though. A lot of it's pretty obvious, so I'm going to pull this up. I've actually saved this to my computer because I and, and I'm going to write it down. I don't want to lose this. You're going to start with your flour, all-purpose flour, because you are going to be adding in your soda and powder later. So here we have, I've just got some uh, all-purpose flour here. You're going to be using six cups of flour, okay? Then you're going to be using your baking powder. I've already, went, I've gone ahead and measured this out, okay? Uh, about three teaspoons of baking powder, okay? Your baking soda, that's the strong stuff. Uh, you're going to be using only a, about a teaspoon. I always even do a little bit less than that. I'm always, I, I shy away from that. Two eggs, farm fresh is always best. Buttermilk, this is a half a cup of buttermilk, so obviously best there if possible if it's homemade and fresh off the farm. We're going to be using vanilla. No, we're not going to have a sipping party today. This is my homemade vanilla. I've got to pour that out. It's ready to go, but I just grabbed the big one here. This is great to give it the holidays for a gift. Uh, for the vanilla, you're going to be adding about a teaspoon. You're going to be adding salt, and your salt, you're going to be adding about a teaspoon. And then, of course, butter. Now, you can use lard if you'd like, but we're going to be using butter here, and we're going to be using a cup, so we're going to have to soften that up. So we're just going to get started with this. And again, I'm winging it, okay? The goal of this is to make your large batter. It's, the, it's like a large, almost like a thick dough, almost like a cookie dough in a way. And you're going to separate those out to make individual little balls. And you're going to stamp them out and bake them into in, as individual layers. This is a time process. Um, I found out by making my others that it's no wonder that when they made these, thank you, Oliver, that when they made these, they only made them once or twice a year, Christmas and a wedding, a very special occasion because it took a lot of time. Think about a wood stove or in the chimney or... <laughs> Uh, but also um, the resources. When, if you make it with apple butter in between your layers, the last one that I made took called for four, uh, two quarts of apple butter, the big stuff. So we're going to try it a little bit different today. We're going to use some cooked apples, and we're going to change it up, and we're going to see how this old-timey recipe goes. There's really not any spices in the actual cake. Uh, no molasses, no cinnamon, anything. All of that's going with your apples instead. So let's get started. Get that rice goods going at a light, just a light mix. All dry goods going in. All right, so we've got all our dry goods and already mixed together, just the dry goods, just real lightly. You can sift it. I didn't sift it. I'm sort of just going with the flow here. We're going to cream and put together all of the wet goods with the sugar. So I, it doesn't call to do that. Again, I'm um, going with the flow. So here's our two eggs, black copper moran eggs. We love them so much. We're going to put in um, a cup of butter. So that's two sticks. A little, still a little bit clumpy. And eh, we ain't going to worry about it. Then we have reaching over here, reaching over. We got our sugar, two cups of sugar. Hello. You can use organic or whatever you've got on hand. 
about a teaspoon of vanilla. You got it. And we're gonna start creaming this together, okay? I've just gotten in the habit of where how I like to separate my dry goods from the wet and get them all mixed up. Really good before I put them together. Sometimes you add the flour over here, whatever. So, I'm just gonna spend a minute and get this mixed up and then we'll add the buttermilk and we'll be ready to rock and roll. All right, I'm trying to get it to where you all can see. Kind of made a little well in the center there of the um, flour mixture. And we're gonna start getting this going. Man, that's good, butter's so good. Let me get the rest of that out, just keep filming that. Kind of try to get it more in the center so it'll mix all the way throughout. And we'll get it going. I'm gonna switch places with you here in just a second. All right, we've got that. All right, guys, we're gonna start mixing this. I had a little bit of more butter still in the bowl there, so I had to put that in there. So let's start mixing this, and then we'll add our buttermilk. Start it out slow. I'll let that mix, and as that's mixing, I'm going to get Another spatula you can see this is getting stiff I'm gonna add in my buttermilk that is my buttermilk and we'll have to check it and we may have to scrape down the sides all right let's check it here I should have turned the oven off first See how thick that is? It's not like a cake batter that you would expect. We may have to add more milk. It's almost like you're making um, very similar to what uh, a biscuit dough. So the last one mixed really well in here. This one is a little bit crumbly, so we, we'll have to see what, we, what we're gonna do with it. Oh, that's tough. I may have to take it out. It's not all the way down. Yeah, this is going to have to be taken out and hand kneaded. Makes sense, doesn't it? All right, let's go to the next phase. All right, guys, so I didn't want to over knead that in, in the KitchenAid. I like to keep it as rugged as possible. It was very crumbly. It's kind of like a, reminds me of a little bit of a tea cake. I'm going to go ahead and make, this recipe can make up to 12 layers, okay? If I can get nine, I'm going to be really happy because I found out last time I made it, if I make more than nine layers, it might not fit in my cake container when I take it with me somewhere. So, some recipes will make six layers, some will make anywhere from eight to ten, and if you get really lucky, you'll have a recipe that gives you up to twelve. This is the recipe for ten to twelve layers. I might just choose to back it off one. So, Taking this out, and the old recipe says to literally take out the dough and work it as though it was like a biscuit dough. So I had a little bit of flour. I actually added just a hair more milk to it. So here I am trying to, you know, make a recipe more precise, and I'm telling you I'm adding a hair of milk, but you'll get the point. I just wanted it to work together just a little bit more. So we're making our layers. It looks messy. It is a little messy, but... It is what it is. What we're going to do is we're going to make our balls here and we're going to chill them and then we're going to start making them individually. Each one of these is a layer in a round uh, nine inch pie pan. Okay? Nothing fancy. And what I'm going to do, and the thing is, is some layers I might make, it might be a little bit bigger than others. That's just, I like that. I don't want complete perfection with something like this. I want rugged realness. That, can you say that? So we're going to have at least nine layers. I may make this one a little bit bigger. And that's okay because we're just starting out. So you can see here how much dough and how many layers um, that you're going to end up getting easily. So 10 to 12 is not going to be a problem. And that's okay. 
or you can make less, make them thicker, whatever you like. That's the thing, is just do whatever you like. Now, in terms of what is in the layers, in terms of what is in the layers, um, that's up to you. Some recipes call for dried apples. Some recipes call for apple butter. Some, some call for both. Some call for pie filling. Some call for just baked apples. It's whatever works for you. Like I said on the last one, I found myself using apple butter. It takes a whole lot of apple butter. And I'm picky about my apple butter. It worked great for the cake, but I'd prefer to stretch my apple butter over biscuits over a year-long situation. Uh, than just one or two cakes, unless you were really special, of course. So, you just have to choose what works best for you. So, I'm going to make nine layers. Actually, this made me about 11. So, again, 10 to 12 layers. Um, you've got it easily here. So, all right, we're going to chill these, chill these just a little bit. And we're going to start pressing them in the uh, pie pan. We're going to bake them, and we're going to get the process rolling. It's an all-day affair. Just put in some parchment paper and spray. And we're going to get these first layers going. Some people roll them out. We're not rolling. We're going old school. This kind of helps me figure out where I want to control things. guys we've got the first three layers out I'm doing I'm baking three at a time okay now you can take a knife and you could probably uh, cut the edges off of this if you wanted to now remember if you wanted to make less layers but bigger you could do that also um, I'm just sort of playing with this testing this recipe out to see what I like I'm also um, testing out to see if I like my baked and fried apple mix um, in this as opposed to apple butter or dried apples. Dried apples are, unless you're dehydrating them yourself, which is definitely the way to go. Boy, I'll tell you what, if you buy that stuff, it's expensive. It's nine to $10 a pound here. And I am willing to bet that a big cake like this is gonna take about two pounds uh, with what I could figure out with my apple butter. So we're playing. This is a Appalachian play day. So I'm going to take this and all you're going to do is you're literally going to be layering this. It is okay to get the juice on there, okay? Traditionally, when you make an apple stack cake like this, you're gonna want it to sit um, for about two days, okay? You're gonna wrap this bad boy up and you're gonna let it sit. I can tell you right now, the moisture um, that I got from the last one, uh, it, you know, when it came to day two, versus the first day is incredible. So we've done that. And all I'm doing here, now I'm filming. So my 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 boys that help me film and my sweet husband that helps me film have gone out to the barn. They're bringing all the animals in for me. If mom's making a stack cake, uh, then, you know, they're willing to do the farm work tonight. So we're gonna continue to layer. We're gonna make some more of these um, little cakes here. And it's going to be a big one. You can see that when you're using actual uh, larger size apple pieces, how much thicker uh, this is going to be. So we'll see how <laughs> we'll see how high we stack this. All right, we're just going to keep going. It's going to drip. It drips all down, around, and all through. That's what makes it good. All right, we'll be back with you. All right, guys. I think this is the version. I've been waiting for, and I think it's the version you've been waiting for. This isn't something difficult to make, but it does take a lot of time. This has been going on for several, several hours. Uh, you'll tell by the different lighting in the uh, video from early to late afternoon to after dinner time. So I've made nine layers. I actually made ten, but we're only going to go with nine because that's what I've baked, three, three, and three. Um, to let you know that when you bake the layers, um, it's at 400 for about... 10 minutes okay um the last recipe that i made was 12 to 13 minutes but that's because it had molasses in the cakes and it was more moist so it took longer to cook i'm going to tell you right now that i am going to like this version more i like more of the cake 
it's more of a soft cake feel with in terms of the actual layers. And then you can just address the um, coon hound that's shaking her ears in there. <laughs> hey, it's Appalachia. Um, but uh, then you can put your layers in terms of what is your apple mix, whatever you like, applesauce, apple butter, dried apples, cooked apples, fried apples, that's up to you. If you want a smaller condensed cake, then I would do more of a sauce type deal. I like it a little bit chunky. You can already see that as it settles and as the moisture is going into the cake, just after a couple of hours, it does settle down. Now what we will do is we will continue to layer this. That's what I'm doing right now. And this is gonna sit for at least 24 to 48, 48 hours is actually ideal. Going over, you know, letting it sit for about 48 hours is really what it needs to do. The, it just gets so moist. Uh, it's just unbelievable. Um, can you imagine this being three more layers high? I mean, seriously? So we're gonna cover it up and we're gonna let it sit. And my husband and uh, oldest boy and sons, they went outside and they were working the barn tonight. I didn't go out there. They locked it all up for me because I've made dinner with this. And they said, you can smell it outside. Okay. So we are doing something right here. So I'm just going to be, you know, just gingerly put this on. It'll continue to work its way down. I'll tell you, I can see why these were wedding cakes. We appreciate you watching us here at Appalachia's Homestead. We'll put the recipe in the description and the time. I think I sort of worked a few kinks out so you know exactly what to use. Because uh, like I said, the old timey recipe was a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Uh, very simple to make, time consuming, but uh, it certainly makes you appreciate days gone by uh, and everything that the folks in front of us did. So if you like what you see here at Appalachia's Homestead, be sure to like and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. This is already on Instagram. And uh, we're on Pinterest, and we love hearing from you. And I'm going to tell you what. We are going to have a feast. In fact, if this works out half as well as I think it's going to, I can guarantee you old Fred's getting one, and this will be on the Christmas Day spread. We'll talk to you soon. Y'all take care out there.